So I'll, I'll be, I'll be like, so, so this <laughs> one's diesel. <laughs> yeah. This one's petrol, and this one is like NASA fuel. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim PF, and on this episode we've got something a little bit different. I've got my good friend Ty, who is a fellow YouTuber. Uh, he is a sneaker reviewer. He's actually also my neighbour, and he recently did a video where he got me to get a pair of trainers. So I'm returning the favour, and I'm getting him into whiskey. Ty, if you want to just do a little bit about your channel and see if everyone was interested and they can move across. Cool, yeah. Well, my channel is Ty Kicks on YouTube and it's predominantly about sneaker and life vlogging and reviews. And all I tend to do is just sort of waffle on. But, you know, YouTube's full of a lot of them and they get a lot of subscribers, so I just keep on going. Anyway, for me, this is a new experience. Hopefully I'm going to learn a little bit more about whiskey, but... Um, I suppose my experience of whiskey is very minimal, so this is an education. Yeah, I, uh, I you sent me a picture recently where you had some Hay Club in your uh, in your cabinet. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. I, I'm always understanding of the fact that there is some rather uh, low end stuff to try and start you off. Yet, you know, this is my way to be able to start to learn a little bit more, get better education of what's a good quality whiskey. Excellent. Right, so what I've done today is I've got to tie a bit of a secret blind tasting. I know what these are, he doesn't. They're going from this to this to this, and for Ty it's this to this to this. And we're going to go through each one and probably see what Ty prefers, and then I'm going to reveal what they are to you guys and to Ty. And uh, hopefully get a bit of a surprise in. So uh, should we delve straight into the first one and see what we get? Let's go for it, <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, I've probably been a little bit unfair with this first one. Okay. Because... It's a specific finish. Okay. So it's going to probably smell a bit odd. So my sense of smell is sort of... It tries to point me in a direction that's probably completely false, to be fair, but I try my best. Well, one thing we always say is that sort of nothing is, is wrong, really. Okay. Nothing's wrong. So if you smell something, you probably do. I smell a little bit of, like, woodiness to it. It, yeah. it smells a little bit... You know, like, I presume that's kind of probably from a, the barrel that it's been, yeah. you know... So yeah, this one's a curing uh, in. <laughs> uh, this one's a non-age statement, which okay. means it hasn't said how long it's been in a barrel for, but okay. at least three years. But okay. I would imagine more. Try Give if you want. Try. Yeah, go for try. See, it's sort of yeah. It definitely has a little bit less taste of that that woodiness when you mm -hmm. try it compared to its smell. But I definitely think that it's um, it's not overly too like potent and strong. It's it's quite it's quite drinkable. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I, you know the experience of whiskies that I've tried in the past have been, you know, from one end of the spectrum to the other, being extremely strong to you know mis mixer whiskies. So this isn't a, a bad one. Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah, this one's um, at forty percent, which is the minimum, and. Um, if I, uh, I don't want to lead you too much, but you no. should probably get quite a lot of sweetness on it. Yeah, that is the it's one thing that I've sweet. picked up on is that it's not uh, too bitter in any way. It doesn't mm. have any bitter aftertones. It doesn't have anything that I would turn around and say that um, would would kind of make me think if I if I drank a little bit more of this, I'd kind of want to stop yeah. um, for it not really being kind of uh, easy. Um, but yeah, it's a nice it's a nice whiskey from an amateur's point of view. Excellent. All right, well, if we go straight on to the next one then, and then you can tell me if you smell anything different, you okay. should, okay. and if you think it's better or not. Okay, okay. So straight away, that smells a little bit, sort of, almost a little bit sort of top, like fudge, fudgy. Okay. It's got a little bit of a fudge tone to it. Um, yeah, I don't... Sm smells sweet. Yeah, definitely. Definitely smells sweet. I think your uh, your nose is better than you think. Yeah, it's funny because, like, I suppose, you know, I am a sweet tooth. So, sort of, like, those tones are coming out to me purely for my poor dietary habits. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Whereas it's sharper to mm. the taste. It's definitely got a real, almost a, a bit of a zing off the tongue a little bit compared to the previous one. 
quite acidic, I think, almost. I don't know whether that's really yeah, that's how whiskies definitely. can go, but it feels, uh, you know, as soon as you drink it, like you're you're trying something that's got a little bit more punch to it, definitely. Okay. Well, this one is 43.2%. I've done them in order because they go up in ABV. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it is completely different beast to the one we just had, um, which I'll, I'll tell you why in a bit. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know if you think that's better or worse than the other one. Um, but I, I suppose uh, because they're so contrasting, I suppose from my point of view, it really is a personal opinion, but I, I prefer the first one. It's a bit smoother, that's all. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I think that will, when I reveal, that'll be a real teller about your personal tastes because yeah. I say they are so different and mm -hmm. They divide the field. Mm -hmm. Let's try the third one. You notice I haven't gone into kind of colour or anything like that because no. some of these have got added colour, some of them definitely haven't. I um, suppose as well, like, you know, being blind sometimes, like, I don't know whether colour's a giveaway, but. Yeah, and a lot of people are led by colour and mm. they shouldn't be. That's why we tend to do things blind if we can. See, that one smells weaker than the other two. Mm. It doesn't smell like it's got as much um, strong aromas coming from it straight away. Still got a little bit of woodiness to it. Mm -hmm. Still got. Interesting taste. Yeah, this, this one packs a little bit more of a punch. This is at 47%. Mm. So you are right. Um, on the nose, there's not this. It's not immediately obvious. I'd say it's more subtle. It's subtle, but it definitely still rolls over the tongue mm. a little bit fiery. Like it's still got something in it that kind of has a bit of kick, mm. almost to the point where it makes the first one taste a little bit weak. You know, the, the the next two sort of going along seem to go along obviously exactly in in volume order, but in terms of taste, it's maybe not as as sharp as the middle one, but it's definitely got some bite to it. Mm. Yeah, and I don't know, um, it's it's really subtle in this one, but it's meant to have a bit of peat smoke in it, so I don't know if you're picking up any kind of smoke. Yeah, in it, in yeah that was the one thing, I think, because it, when I said it smelled a little bit weaker to me, mm. I suppose it's weaker from the standpoint that the middle one has a, a tone that stands out to me straight away, whereas the first one, it, it almost, I don't know whether it is or not, but it almost felt a little bit more generic in the sense that, you know, a lot of whiskies have this kind of barrel smell, these wooden tones in it. Whereas the last one itself definitely had um, a richness about it, I think, really. Okay. All right, so if I was going to put you on the spot then and say which one you thought was best to worst or worst okay. to best, what would you say? In terms of my personal preference mm -hmm. or in terms of the quality of the No, product? in terms of your personal preference. Okay, uh, personally... I would probably turn around and go for the weak one. <laughs> That's your favourite. It's my it's my favourite in terms of drinkability. Like mm -hmm. it, it, you know, if I'm just sort of having like a glass or two, then maybe the other two would be more of a personal choice. The last one I could probably drink more of, and uh, it would be easier to drink. If I'm going on pure, you know, quality, I, I almost feel like the the last one has the subtleness, not too strong a smell in terms of like overly too strong a smell and um, but but has a, a good taste because a good, good punch. Okay well I, I think um, that's very wise actually but uh, and, it, and this is what I like about personal preference so I'll do a little bit of a reveal now and yeah. um, see what you think. Yeah. So the first one was a Glen Marnock Rum Cask Finish Limited Edition so okay. That is Aldi, okay, okay. and that's um, seventeen pounds. That is, which I think is an absolute bargain. Yeah, definitely. Um, I got the other one as well, but I picked that one because I didn't know how much you liked rum and see if you would pick any rum notes out. Mm -hmm. The second one, again, I was a little bit unfair because this is actually a bourbon. Okay. Woodford Reserve. Yeah. Which again is relatively cheap. It's about sort of thirty odd pounds, but that's different because obviously it's American mm -hmm. and um, it's made. I think this might actually be a wheated, I can't remember. But um, they have different rules and regulations. And the last one mm -hmm. was a Highland Park 21 years. Okay. And that is 150 pounds. <laughs> so straight away, realistically, the two ends of the spectrum are the ones that I actually hit the nail on the head, really, mm. which is great. You know, I, I know that if I'm looking for 
uh, maybe a whiskey to to drink throughout a night or a, you know maybe you don't want to overspend and you you do eventually mix which is a dangerous thing to say in the world of whiskey uh, you, you're not going to cry over over that bottle being used at 17 pounds um, the middle one strangely enough I have tried before mm. um, but I've tried it with ice Mm. And that really knocks down that potency quite quickly Definitely. on that one and uh, waters it down. So, you know, strangely enough, I would have never have picked it because it changes the taste and the tones quite, pretty, pretty quickly. And the last one, you can tell it's quality. You can tell it's got that quality uh, about it from its smell and from its taste. So uh, I'm, I'm glad my nose is working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's a, a good thing as well, because it means that um, you're not just sort of casually you, uh, into whiskey, you could really open it up if you really wanted mm. to, but um, I promise you one thing, it is uh, it's an expensive hobby. And uh, when you start down that road, um, my cupboards are full now, unfortunately. Definitely, and I think that, you know, in, in, the, in the genre of YouTubing that I do, it's not, it's not cheap to collect shoes. No. But I don't know whether I could get into whiskey enough to have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of whiskey no. in my cupboards. So I'd need to, I'd need to definitely expand my knowledge base. Yeah, and I think it's, um, I've often said that what we do is quite similar from different genres because you have to make a choice when you buy, when you buy that sneaker yep. or that bottle, you have to make that choice whether you're going to open it. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then once it's open, that's, that's basically worthless now. Yeah, definitely. So um, I didn't pay £150 for that, I might add, but um, I got it for a lot less. But uh, it's open now, that's mine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink that. And when you wear your shoes... Definitely, that, they're, they're that will reduce the price. Yeah. Sometimes quite dramatically, sometimes not so much depending on their rarity. And uh, I presume the same with uh, its, its you know, uh, scarcity when it comes to whiskey as to how many barrels or how much it was it was produced of it and it's the same with sneakers as well so uh yeah i, I kind of get it it's like it's like antique dealing yeah but it ch you choose your poison <laughs> yeah 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 we have a, a definite split in the in the whiskey world as well we call them flippers okay when people buy to sell on and oh. there's a distinct group of people who hate that and a distinct yeah. group of people who just do it for and a living strangely enough you could move straight into the sneaker world as well there are the resellers as there always are for anything who thinks they can make a quick buck definitely definitely but it was funny because me and ty started youtube about sort of the same sort of time um and i watched ty's videos right at the start without kind of any real interest in trainers whatsoever and it didn't take long before i started noticing what was on people's feet and saying oh, i know what trainer that is now somehow and uh i think i even said to you i, I walk past a store like every week in birmingham and only just noticed that it was there. It's been open for a couple of years now, you said. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and it's the same, you know, I think collaborations between people who like to be creative and create media is, is really good, but also to create content for people that want to watch it that's interesting content too. And I think that, you know, I've learned clearly enough from watching Vin's channel and No Nonsense Whiskey to be able to help me with this uh, blind test. But what I will say is that it's now really helped me when I go to a bar or a restaurant and if I'm going to order anything, I'm a little bit more speculative about what's behind the counter. Definitely, yeah. And uh, you'd be surprised about what you can get for a good price. And if you go to London and things like that, then you, you're going to be spending a lot of money on a single measure. I've spent Definitely. up to £30 on a single measure before. But um, it, it's, it's great when you can really open your world and try a few different things and uh, impress a few people that you're with as well. So, oh, I'm on the whiskey now. Well, that's it, and and I think you know I've always been quite late to the party when it comes to sort of learning new things within the like alcohol world because uh, I'm a, a new dad of the last year and and that's not been on the agenda yet. You know, going on a year, it's now it's now time to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, and uh, and why not? start with my favorite drink exactly exactly <laughs> it was really nice to try something that's got such uh, such quality to it as well mm. like it's not every day you're going to catch um a bottle of that just sat behind a you know a bar at your local your local bar or your local pub or whatever it may be so it was nice to to, to gauge it yeah excellent awesome well there you go that's uh, getting a noob into whiskey i think that's been a pretty good success i'm Really happy that Ty managed to pick out some stuff and uh, and not just go oh that's just whiskey oh and uh, I think that's gone down really well. Um, hopefully Ty enjoyed himself. Yeah, definitely. I think you know learning 
from uh, Vin and No Nonsense Whiskey uh, every week, picking up a little bit more information. You know, it's got a filter to more than just me. So, um, you know, I really appreciate all the advice and all the help. Excellent. Don't forget to check out uh, Ty's vlog on YouTube. If you're into sneakers and live vlogging, things like that, it does a little bit of drone work as well, which is awesome. Uh, also, don't forget to check out more of my channel and subscribe if this is your first time here. Thanks for watching.